Because you're known for distance, probably more than I'm anything. known for my looks. Yeah, looks and then distance. <laughs> yeah, second distance. Yeah, second distance. <laughs> Yeah, there's so much like, so there's so many different aspects. I, I, I almost want to talk about caddying. Caddying? I, yeah, I almost want to talk about caddying, like of where golf, like golf is yeah. with caddies and, you know, getting disc golf like up to that level, like someone that just knows, like knows you well, that's a, and that's just knows like, hey, this is like, here's the range finder, boop, it's 257. Headwind, you, you know, throw this disc on this that's angle. That's gonna be your buzz yeah. on a hyzer. Yeah, because well, that, that's like I was talking to Ben about it because, you know, we were just talking about how much the sports are growing and Ben's a machinist for like NASA parts, like makes a lot of money and has a great career. And I was like, dude, imagine if I could make enough to pay you two hundred thousand dollars a year to tour with me. Right. Like, imagine how much that would like help me. Yeah. You know, but it's like you gotta make Macbeth money to pay someone like that. You know, like yeah. maybe I make three hundred grand a year. I can't pay him two hundred. You know, but like if you're making 1.5 million, I could pay one of my best buddies. This dude played with, you know, uh, Steady Ed. He knows, he's the one that like taught me how to throw a putter. Like this dude's like been very influential in my disc golf game. Like I could take, again, USCDC, any single hole, you could put me in a spot and he could tell me what disc to throw, how to throw it, what angle, what grip, what, throw it right over that tree, right at that. Like he knows my game, you know, like when it's like to have him out there with me for 25 tournaments, I would win. Yeah. Like I, I would win, like it's that simple, but it's like to get him to take a week off work, you know, loses him $10,000 and all of a sudden you're like, yeah, can't yeah, do it. Yeah, what can you, know? you do? It's like, not like even if I won <laughs> yeah. the tournament, Yeah. I'm yeah. way negative <laughs> yeah, after you know? I pay you. But it's like, that's the thing though, is it's like disc golf at some point, you know, like Needs I said, to get there. imagine Tiger Woods without his caddy. Right. He would have won, but not as many times. You know, having right. someone read the putt for you, having someone know the wind, you know, you just remind you like, hey, you know, stable up. Hey, you know, like, obviously I become one of the best players in the world by myself. You know, I don't really have a caddy, but like to have someone there on your bag that always knows and is always looking out for you. You know, like there's definitely times where I fly off the rails and just start throwing discs. And I'm like, I look back at it. I'm like five holes into having a small tantrum and I'm like, Bro, you just parred five holes in a row because you just are losing your mind. But it's like, you can't do that if you have a caddy. You know, they're like, give me the disc back, focus, take a breath, throw the good shot. You know, it's like, yeah. that means something, you know? But I don't know. I mean, like I said, for Macbeth, it's there. I'm sure for Ricky, you know, he could have. Yeah. But also the person I want to take is an expensive person. You know, I'd, yeah. I'm not trying to bring my buddy who works at Arby's. You know, like the person I trust, you know, is someone that, it would have to be a career for him to make that yeah. choice. You know, he has a family, he has kids yet. You know, it's like, I couldn't take him away from machining NASA parts to carry my bag for 15 bucks a round, you know, like, but yeah, I think that, I think we're going the right direction in every asset of the game. I mean, I, mean, I think that disc golf is growing. I think that the fan base is growing. I think the media is growing. I think everything I think is on the right track, you know? Yeah. yeah. Okay, a few questions that I have to make sure. Are you running out of battery, Mikey? I'm just gonna let that one go. That one's fine. Okay. I'm gonna, it's the SD card actually. Okay, I just wanna make sure there are some questions that I have to ask. I, I love just following the conversation where it's going. Um, but I have to ask, uh, for sure, when you gained your distance, cause you're known for distance, probably more than I'm anything. known for my looks. Yeah, looks and then distance. <laughs> yeah, second distance. Yeah, second distance. <laughs> But people know they can't recreate your looks without yeah. expensive plastic surgery. Yeah. Um, but they want to try to recreate your distance. When you were gaining your distance, you said you were just like going out to the course all the time, right? Did it just naturally stack on? Yeah. Or, yeah, okay, so you what, didn't like... What happened, and this is the honest truth, the course I learned on, the farthest hole at the time was probably, I'm not kidding you, 400 feet. Well, I had no touch, no control really. So I just threw putter or mid-range as hard as I could on every single hole. Yeah. It, and like, that's how I played the course. Like if the hole was 350 feet and left, I just threw my most stable putter and hoped it went left. And if it was 250 feet and right, I just, you know, like, so I just kind of like played like a jack wagon, but it taught me how to throw far because, and how to hit that line. Cause that's, it's one thing to throw far and it's one thing to hit a line. Like Garrett Gerthy, I mean, that dude can lace it in the woods. Yeah. Calvin Heimberg, I mean, Macbeth, I mean, all the top guys, but like, you know, me, Calvin, Garrett, 
Seppo Paiu, Macbeth, all are really good at throwing 90% and hitting a 10 foot wide gap. And that's worth something. But I learned that because I like kind of learned how to play disc golf the wrong way. You know, if I were to teach someone how to play, I would teach them how to like have touch and be gentle and like flip up the disc. I just was like, okay, I only want to throw one speed. How do I play the course doing that? So it just taught me like throw hard, you know, because our one of the first holes is like 370 feet uphill. Well, if I threw a fairway driver, I went over the back. If I threw a mid-range, I go kind of far. So I just, I literally, until six years ago, I threw putter as hard as I could on that hole. Like, and I birdied it a lot, but like, that's not the way you play the game, but like it just, that's how I learned how to throw far, was I just like, didn't know any better. Right? You just basically threw max distance all the and time. just changed the disc. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I threw the same 90% shot all the time and yeah. just hope that this went left or right. Like Yeah, and it kind of looks like, cause you always take the same, like a very similar, and when we get the footage all together, we'll see for sure. But, um, you know, it seems like very similar walk up. Yeah, I don't change know? much. You know what yeah. I don't, I don't, I always tell you if you could pick, just like in golf, Dustin Johnson last year before John Rahm took him over was world number one. Mm -hmm. He said, I never hit one draw off the tee. Draws working the ball yeah. left, you know, uh -huh. this way. Never hit one. Which is what most people want in ball yeah. golf. Right? Yeah, it goes farther. Yeah. Yeah. So, world number one at the time, I never tried to hit one draw off the tee. Think about that. Think, the number one golfer in the world didn't try to hit the ball to go left. Uh -huh. Like, disc golf. Like I, I like to throw on a little bit of hyzer. So, if that means that the hole goes left, I'm going to throw a stable disc so it stays on hyzer and goes left. If that means the hole goes a little right, I'm going to want to throw a little hyzer and have the disc go right. Like, I just like to throw the same shot and even now switch the disc. I just have way more control and touch now, but like I still kind of play the same way. Like I bet you there's, there's courses, Fountain Hills, for example, where there are 18 holes there. I probably throw hyzer release on every single hole. It's just what my disc does out there that, that dictates what it does. Yeah. Yeah. I, I try to coach people. They're like, you know, these are, yeah, you can have a, you know, abbreviated swing or, you know, your full swing. But what I try to teach people is to get a natural, yeah. smooth swing. And then in the beginning, when you want a very distance, just change the disc if you can. Yeah. Cause then you don't have to change anything and you get good at that natural. And then later you learn how and when to alter. Well, but hey, and that goes back to what we were talking about before is like people who try to copy someone's game or throw or yeah. putt, you, <clears throat> and under pressure, your body's gonna revert back to what it knows. And no matter how much muscle memory, not no matter how much, but like within reason, your muscle memory is gonna go back to what your body naturally does. Right. And you can watch people run or watch people swing a bat or watch people do a lot of things. Like if you watch me play any sport, you can you can see my resemblance from disc golf. You can see my resemblance, like if you watch me play golf, <clears throat> you can tell that if I swung a baseball bat, it'd be the same way. Like I don't ever change what I do because it's just how I learned. You know, like I, so I went through like one form revision and all it was was just my left arm. Like everything else was the same. I just did something different with my left arm, but like you, whatever your body naturally is gonna do is how I think you have to compete. You know, like Macbeth never copied anyone's putt, but like everyone's copied Macbeth's putt. And no one's as good as Mac at Macbeth at putting as Macbeth is at putting. You know, like, uh, you know, Bradley Williams is very resembling of, of Paul McBeth when he puts. Brody Smith's very resembling of Paul McBeth when he puts, but neither of them putt like Paul McBeth. Right. You know, but Ricky arguably is a better putter, puts his own way. Eagle, yeah. better putter, puts his own way. Yeah. Adam Hamas, better putter, puts his own way. No one's ever like taken someone's putting style in disc golf and been better than them at it. Right. Like it's never happened. Because because your body doesn't work that way. Like Paul McBeth grabbed a putter and went like this and made it. Ricky Wysocki grabbed a putter and went like this and made it. James Conrad, you know, like, look at the greatest putters and none of them look alike. Yeah. Then you look at the people who are trying to copy the greatest putters. I mean, Germ did that little fall sideways thing like Ricky did, you know. Brody tries to copy Paul. Bradley tries to copy Paul, you know, like, no one that's great at something copied someone else. Mm -hmm. it's, that, it's that simple. And like, maybe you took pieces of it and built off of it, right. but no one is like, oh, look at who I look like, and then was better than them. Right. And maybe in tennis it's different. Maybe in, you know, like golf. Like no one could copy Tiger Woods and then go beat Tiger Woods with his own swing. You don't right. do it. Yeah, it's like, uh, I, I, it's actually, uh, this is semi related, but it was like a music, like with music artists. Yeah. I, I have a degree in music education. And uh, 
people be like, oh, people tell me I sound just like yeah. so-and-so. And it's like, well, that sucks for you <laughs> because nobody's gonna listen to you when they can listen when to When they can listen to the original. Yeah. It's not gonna work, but yeah, in, in sports, um, I think, you know, what we hear in the coaching world is range of acceptability. Yeah. Like, this is generally where most people fall. Like, you know, your arm can be anywhere from here to here. Yeah. Is what we see as a range of acceptability. And then it's learning and spending time, which a lot of people don't wanna do, of finding out how their body most efficiently operates, usually within that range. Yeah. And, well, so, and, and that was like, you know, kind of my point is it's like, grab a putter in disc golf if you never played and throw it at the basket. And however you naturally kind of want to do that within reason, mm -hmm. perfect that. Don't, don't try to copy your friend. Don't try to copy Ricky. Like right. that's how their body works. Ricky's six foot six and huge. And you know, like his yeah. fingers, his hand, everything's different. Like Macbeth and I are kind of the same size, but like we don't hold a disc the same. We don't putt the same. We don't, mm -hmm. nothing is the same even though we're almost like the same person, you know, like right. it's like he does his thing, I do my thing, and we look nothing alike when we play. Yeah. You know, every Jenkins was the first person that did that swoopy sidearm thing. Yeah. Paul Macbeth adopted it. Now you see every amateur in the whole world do that thing because Paul does it, you know, like yeah. it's like, hey, like if it works, cool, but like you probably could learn how to do it more efficiently on your own is my take on it. And it's not, it's not a diss, it's not a, a slight, but it's just like, I think that you could have probably figured it out on your own and done a, mm -hmm. a better job. Yeah, it's like when I'm coaching kids, give them like the fundamentals, and this is in tennis, not in disc golf. And then you just like let them run with it for yeah. a few years and you don't get crazy um, detail oriented yeah. on that because kids don't have, you know, jacked up movement patterns yeah. that adults have from, you know, sitting at a desk and stuff like that. Um, so your body will naturally kind of smooth some things out. Yeah. You kind of alluded to one of the things that I think is a little bit of a myth in disc golf coaching, which is find someone who has the same body type as you and then copy them. Yeah. I think that's just why, <laughs> like, there's no, so, you, how can you see the inside of their, you know, I don't think you should ever copy anybody doing anything ever in your life. I don't think that Dale Earnhardt Jr. in, you know, J Jimmy Johnson drive the NASCAR the same. They're both won championships, but like the method of being successful in that car isn't the same. You know, like the Floyd Mayweather and Mike Tyson, like they're not the same. Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather, like it might be the same body type in the same class, but like they don't fight the same. Like you can't right. copy someone and do the same thing. Like there, a lot of people who do things are doing it naturally. If you try to copy my form, you simply can't. Like, I don't care what you say. People always go on that, I want your form. Get in line and good luck. Like, that's how my body works. Like, you're not gonna copy that. Like, yeah. it's not, that's not that easy, you know? Yeah. There's been, there's probably people that have hit more golf balls than Tiger Woods, but their swing still sucks. Yeah. Maybe they're good, because they've hit so many balls, but they stuck with their swing. You know, look at John Rahm or Tony Finau. Like, their swing is this long. It's the shortest little swing in the world, but they hit the ball just as far as everyone else. And John Rahm's world number one right now. Previous world number one, Dustin Johnson, is six foot six, takes a backswing longer than the frickin' moon, and hits the ball. But like, he's not doing anything John Rom can't do. Yeah. But John Rom's maximized his ability to do that thing, and his body's accepted it. So why, why, what is the hang up? Like, why wouldn't you keep doing it?